hurts, is it going to pop? Yeah. Oh, I can't see anything. It's like the end instead of the beginning. What's wrong? That full stage manager has forgotten to bring up the lights. Oh no, Ernest. He didn't forget. There's something deliberate about this. And you know, I really don't trust him. You got him wrong, Winifred. He was very kind. He wouldn't do such a thing. I have great faith in him. Just leave everything to me. Or I'll go talk to him. What? No, you can't! Why not? Well, didn't you hear what he said? We must not leave the stage until we act out the play. He was just trying to be impressive. I've met that kind of before. It's about time he realized that actors are more important than stage managers. Well, he said as if it was the law. I'm not gonna stand in your dark, am I? Hey! Hey, you! Lights! Maybe we're not as important as you think, Ernest. Let's just be quiet and wait. Is there an audience out there? Yes, I can hear them sighing. Can you hear them what? Sighing, dear, as in breathing heavily, as in sleeping. I feel as if I'm asleep too. Well, if everyone's going to feel things, we won't get anywhere at all. Yes. Sleep and dreaming. I'm a child again. I'm being led into a room full of people. They tell me to dance. I don't know how to, so I just jump up and down on one foot, up and down, up and down. They applaud and laugh. I'm a huge success. Why do I want to cry? <clears throat> ah, that's more like it. I knew you'd take care of us. I knew it. The stage manager said, let there be light. And there was light. But the lights, they won't stand still. It's worse than before. Why don't you go off in that corner and have that cry? Look, Winifred, we're right. There is an audience out here. So there is. Isn't it wonderful, Tony? Do you see them? Yes, I see them. Well, they're waiting for us to begin. Well, has it been explained to them what's about to happen? I defy you to explain anything that is happening on this stage. Just ask me a question. Oh, don't ask questions, Tony. You'll only make yourself unhappy. Ernest says we should begin. Well, let's begin. No, no, wait, Laura. Tony may ask you a point here. Well, I wonder if they do know what we're doing. Well, maybe someone ought to tell them. <laughs> then tell them. Yeah, it's your bright idea. I'm sure I can do it very easily. <clears throat> oh, I know you could, Ernest. That's why I want him to do it. But, but I, I wouldn't know what to say. I know you wouldn't, Tony. Are you making fun of me, Winifred? Me? Whatever gave you that idea? Oh, okay. Uh, here goes nothing. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today. They say every actor has a dream, a reoccurring dream. But he doesn't know his lines or what the play's about. That's how it is for us today. We don't know our lines nor what the play's about. Why are we here? I don't know. I know that I'm here, thank you. Irrevocably, disgustingly, unwillingly here. Alright. Better let me do it, Tom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an hour ago, each of us received an instruction to report to this theater. There were jobs waiting for us. When we arrived, the stage manager told us to go on stage before an audience and improvise a play, which we are about to do. See how easy that is, though? Yes, it's easy to say what happens, but it doesn't, you're not saying what it means. Who are we? Why are we here? That's the important thing. A young man has rocks in his head. Would it help if we told them our names, Tony? That is a very good suggestion, Laura. No, I was actually about to do it myself. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no program, so you know nothing about us. My name is Ernest. I am returning to the stage after two successful seasons on the West Coast, where I scored two personal successes in two score films. 
born of a theatrical family. I was reared in Ernest! You're not telling them anything. I'm telling them who I am. But it's more than that. Be quiet, Tony. This is very interesting. I love hearing about other people. Fine. I'll be quiet. Go on, Ernest. <clears throat> Why don't you be quiet too, Ernest? I haven't finished yet. Oh, but surely they know all about you. An actor of your standing. You wouldn't want to bore them by telling them about things they already know, do you? Well, then sit no. Down. It's your turn, Winifred. I am Winifred. I've had rather a cloudy experience as an actress. You might have seen me, but you won't recognize me. I usually play the leading lady's best friend. I don't like the theater because I can't trust it, and this is an example of what I mean. Next. My name used to be Laura Lee, but someone told me a long stage name is Bad Luck, so I showed it to Laura. It hasn't helped me much, but I don't really mind. I think that's all. Hold tight, everybody! It's your turn, Tony! I have nothing to say. Oh. But, Tony, you have to tell them something. Why? None of you did. It's all so unreal. Why did you come here? Did you come here for enlightenment? Curiosity? Or were you here to command it? We weren't any of us commanded. Then why are we here? That's the only question. I mean, you're a celebrity. Surely this is beneath you. Laura wasn't even supposed to be an actress, and Winifred hates the stage. And you're afraid, aren't you? Yes, I'm afraid. There, I have to tell you something about myself. Well, if that's all you've got to say, then you can sit back down. You know, you were amusing for a while, but now no longer. And so searching really is the lowest form of entertainment. Look, Tony, I don't see what the problem is. You're asking a simple question, and the answer is equally simple. We are here to please the audience, and they are here to be pleased. Why can't you be more like Ernest, Tony? He knows everything. Please, let's keep going. The stage manager is not going to like it if we don't do something soon. Of course, Laura. Yeah. Uh, Dear gentlemen, I hope you'll be all right with such outbursts. Uh, naturally, some of us are a little confused. Um, but we will begin the play once you've made a few preparations. You see, the stage manager gave us instructions. You mean you brought up all the tables at the cabinet? Shut up, Winifred. And I think it is only fair to let me know what they are. First of all, we are not committed to leave the stage until he is completely satisfied with our performance. Well, that's a little cheerful thing to tell him. He's one of those little sour men who never like anything. You better stop talking about him that way, Winifred. He's right there. He can hear you. That's still nothing compared to what he's done to me. But he's so good and so kind. I have great faith in him. Laura, where do you want to begin? Oh. Sorry, Ernest. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we cannot leave the stage until the performance is ended. And last of all, our play is supposed to be an imitation of life. No, that's wrong! Well, it is. Uh, are you sure, Tony? Yes, I, I listened very carefully. He said. It wasn't supposed to be an imitation of life. It was supposed to be life. Oh, I think maybe you're right. The one thing I do know is ridiculous. Place can be about life, like life, for life, or against life. The best ones are against it. But they can never be life. Oh, that's what he said. Yeah, well, where is very worse. Well, it seems like you're wrong, Ernest. This is an unexpected pleasure. Well, I'm actually not wrong. I know exactly what you said. No. I was trying to see if you, if you will remember. Oh, we did. All right. All right. Let's go. What do we do? We smile and say brilliant things. How do you do, Lord Fiddle? How do you do, Lady Fiddle? How nice of you to come. How nice of you to let me. How nice of you to say so. How nice. How charming. How delightful. Curtain. Guess that wasn't enough. 
course not any friend. Didn't have a, didn't even have a characterization yet. You won't get anywhere like this. It doesn't make sense. I beg your pardon. We have to have some place to start. I know what I'm doing. So you say you need a place to start? You're so sure of it. You find that place. Uh, well, um, maybe we can look around the set. I've already looked. What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing. It served its purpose for generations. Well, it's new to me. Look at the distortions. Where? The walls. They're uneven. And the door. It's crooked. Oh, yes. <coughs> there are no distortions. It's set us perfectly all right. Well, what could it be? <clears throat> well, uh, looks like a room. And uh, you only five rooms in house, so it must be somebody's home. And what's a home without a mother? Got your first character ready, Tony. Okay, well, who would play? Um, there's Winifred. Oh no, there isn't Winifred. <laughs> Why not? You have just the right qualities. I have decided. Well, then you can turn around and undecide. When I was in high school, my first role was a reindeer in a Christmas pageant. Since then, I've only made unmistakably easy virtue and sentence. I won't do it. I should think a mother would be a nice change for you. Me. What, what, what do you want to do then? Well, mind you, I'm sticking my neck out, but once, just once, I want to play this sweet young thing that everybody falls in love with. That's Laura's part. Yeah, I know. It's always Laura's part, and I want to do it once. I don't understand why. Ingenious are such sticky, spineless characters. Well, I want to be sticky. But there's so much more to a good character role. Then you play the mother. I would love to, but I don't think Ernest would let me. I most certainly would not. All right, then I just thought I'd have my say. Mm-hmm. <sighs> right, so, Tony here, you'll play her son. Oh, is that the best I could do? No worry, my friend. I don't like it any more than you do. What's the matter with you now? Me? Yeah. Like, her son. Yeah. I wouldn't know the first thing about it. Try hopping up and down in one foot. <laughs> Very funny one, Fred. Another brittle and smart comment. Well, stop feeling sorry for yourself, Tony. Well, the reason why I can't play your part is I've never been a son. Surely, I had parents. So wonderful that one day they decided to tell me if I wouldn't be as awesome as a child as a step out of their way, that I was keeping them from having a good time. They laughed, laughed at everything, especially things they didn't understand, like Winifred does. They were probably very cruel. <clears throat> Am I? Well, <laughs> if I said yes, you think I'd be feeling sorry for myself. If I said no, you think I'll be lying. Tony, I never intended to be cruel. I feel very kindly about most things. It's just there's something humiliating about letting yourself go. But I think you can play my son. Okay, I will. Good. Laura will play your sweetheart. You have recently become engaged, and you're bringing her home to show your mother. And what will you play, Ernest? I'll be a friend of the family. Wealthy, handsome, dashing, influential, and wise. Backbone of the play, basically. The one who resolves the conflict at the end. Conflict? Does there have to be a conflict? Of course. Who have ever heard of a play without a conflict? What will it be? Am I in it? Yes. Um, Winifred is jealous because you're taking away Tony. So, she's determined to break up this relationship because she's a fighter. But, it turns out, you're a fighter too. Neither of you will give in to conflict. And how do you propose to resolve that? 
You see, you're only jealous of Laura because Tony is the only person you have in your love, in your life to love. So I marry you. That will serve the soul of everything. But it won't Tony's father object. He's dead. He's dead. Huh. That's the role I want to play. And Tony and I get married? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect, Ernest. I don't understand what came up of it. Go on, say the first line. Give me a minute.
but very friend. If you're not gonna care about us, fine. Can you please just care about the audience? Tony. You were supposed to be in love with me. I, I don't love you. I'm not gonna pretend. But that's all there is. That's all we can do. Pretend. Yes, that's all there is. But that's not all there might be. Just once, one moment, there was something right. And, well, but that doesn't seem to be enough, obviously. What will you do? The only thing I can do. You wouldn't dare. Why? Because of that? I have nothing to give them except for myself. But still, that doesn't seem to be enough. But, but the stage manager... I don't care about the stage manager. He tells us to play the most important thing we do, and he convinced you of it. I can neither respect nor fear on someone who puts such high hypocrisy on that. He can damn me if he wants to. But tell me, don't you wonder about me? Will you come, Winifred? I, I like that. Well, I want to, but there's a difference between me and you. You've had your God in here. My conscience is burdened with the things I have not yet done and said. So, I'm sorry, but I can't go with you just yet. The, the lights? 
What about the lights? Our play has ended. And we haven't done anything. Oh yes, we have. We've done everything that was expected of us. It's becoming dark. I don't understand. Ernest, finally you don't understand. But what about the audience? What about them? Oh, the audience? They're no different from us. But when the house lights go back on, they continue improvising.